So we're here at Historic Smithville Park in East Hampton. Um, it's a place that I'm pretty familiar with. Uh, I've been here a bunch of times just to walk around, but uh, you know, also to, to paint as well. Um, and this is a uh, old manor that's on the grounds. So today, I, something about the lighting here really caught my interest. So I'm gonna be working on that today. Now, you might be wondering why I'm using this orangey red sort of rust colored background. Well, if you take a look here, there's only three colors on my palette. Uh, so the colors there are just yellow, a purpley red, and a turquoise with white. So you might be wondering why those three specific colors. Well, they're kind of based on this idea of CMYK, which is um, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. It's the colors that your printer uses when you print any color image, a photo or, you know, any color image on, um, you know, your, off your computer in a document. Um, the only difference here is I'm not using black. The reason I'm doing this today is it's really cold out. I believe it was 24 degrees out when I was painting this. Um, and I also just wanted to capture certain types of lighting and on a day like this you never really know um, you know with over with the overcast days when that light that's peeking through might come back or if it's just going to disappear um, for the rest of the day um, so I didn't want to have to wrestle with 24 colors or 10 colors I just wanted to have to only worry about the th three um, now the reason I'm using this orangey rust color background is that um, I noticed that since there isn't really a true blue here, the the turquoise is actually you know shifted a little bit more towards the uh, the blue side of things, or uh, towards the green side of things, adding a little dab of that purple, uh, purpley red uh, with the white helps it shift a little bit more towards the blue side but having that rust color background really makes it look in context like a blue um, and that's just based on complementary colors so um, when using a really limited palette like this it can be really nice to have an underpainting that helps stretch that gamut even more so I'm filling in the, the background here and just trying to figure out the overall shape of the building that I want to have. Um, just looking at the scene uh, with the trees on both sides of the building, um, I can tell that there's going to be some pretty complicated shapes, but I want that building to read uh, in, a, in a simpler way. Th that way it's kind of like a recognizable sound in all the noise around it so um, at this point I was just trying to look at the the lighting and trying to get the uh, way that I was seeing the sunlight hitting that side of the building um, because on a day like this the shadows aren't really gonna change all that much it's not like a super bright sunny day and then all of a sudden it's now a you know it, it's seven o'clock at night difference um this is it you're you're mostly from what i observed going to see the highlights and the um light side changing a lot more but the shadows don't typically move all that much so i was just trying to get that lighting and then knowing that hey that's the fleeting moment i can always come back to it if it changes back to being sunny out uh, in that spot but I can in the meantime work on all the other areas that seem to be uh, more o more overcast or, or more neutral so I start working on the the sky and going back between the sky and the ground um, the reason I was doing that was I was trying to think about what was literally there in front of me color wise versus what I was trying to say with this painting so I wanted that painting to 
make the the building in the background the main focus and kind of do the opposite of what we're used to uh which is read from right to left i wanted it to read uh sorry uh read from left to right i wanted it to read right from left to left um which it can be done but you just kind of have to convince the eyes to do that for you so in this case i made it so that you have this darker building against a really light background and it's hard to see now but there is a very very light highlight right against the darkness of the rooftop there um there you also have this dark tree to the left of that building and eventually you're going to see that the trees end up having these like really complicated dark branches and dense dense leaves um so it really creates these organic shapes, but I'm also going to make them directional so that they point to that building. And then you also have this simplified shape of that rust colored building. And that overall is pointing is a simple shape pointing right to that uh, yellow building in the background too. It's always nice to have this simple statement and, and know where you want people to look uh, because then it's gonna really drive a lot of your decision making for these paintings um, for example here I'm working on those branches um, I was trying to get them to I was trying to figure out the the way that I wanted them to be compositionally so that they are organic but they also point to that red brick building and then that red brick building points to the building in the background, etc., etc., um, and also there, those branches are curved too around that building, so it sort of creates this implied circle around it. It's just a design method. So here I started to work on the background, the the very far background, and the reason I was doing this with the uh, grass. Uh, I kept on going back and forth with it. So as you can see, just with those simple colors, I was able to get pretty close to where the ground is uh, color-wise in real life. Um, but this is where the, having those artistic decisions comes into play is I can paint those exactly the way that it was, but if it's not telling the story that I want it to tell, which is I really want you to look at this building, um, in the background or I really find this building interesting then um, it's not really it, it doesn't matter if that's what was literally there no one's going to have known other than myself or in this case you because you're looking at it on a camera but if it's just the artist looking at it you can't say that reality made it look that way um, because you're the artist you're not a copy machine so in this case here i decided to make the background a little bit darker around that building um with the uh, you know making the grass darker around there uh so that it sort of highlights the lightness that is going to be on this building once the sun starts to come out and also um with the sky that simple shape of the sky against the simple shape of the building making sure that the darkest darks and the lightest lights are right on that building. Yeah, I believe at this point, this is when the sun started to come out again. So then I went, yes, and started to uh, work on the building again. Because you never know if it's coming back or not. Another thing was, um, so I try to make sure that there's uh, more contrast around there. I mean, you do have contrast with the, the ground versus that red brick building, sure. Um, but there's going to be other things in between that to, to kind of break that up a little bit. But I really did want these yellowy oranges next to these, um, you know, these, these purples in the shadows on that building that I'm working on right there.
as you can see now that I did uh, add some of those branches there um, it's still not done yet there's gonna be more coming um, but it already is breaking up that large shape of the sky that was there before um, because the the problem was that you had this dark building uh, which is the main focus but it was connected to the the in a way because it was su it was darker um, it still was connected to this dark red building also so it created this almost like u-shape and then the lightest value at that point was the sky and there was only these three lines right there if you look if you rewind a little bit um, so now you have these like simple shapes and these dark values these dark shapes of the branches against a light background of the sky and that would have been easier to paint and it's not what was there but the focus in that case would have almost been the trees and that's not what I was really going for at all so this is when I start bouncing back and forth and I remember I was wrestling with what I wanted to do with those trees and see how the lighting was hitting it in certain ways um, because once the the sun came out again um, there's these dense areas of leaves but there's also light that was hitting the the tree trunks and the the uh, branches in certain ways so I was waiting to see if that came back and luckily it did yeah I remember there was a certain point where maybe about an hour, hour and a half into this, I was just so cold. And um, I, I was thinking about, man, maybe I should just go home and just warm up. And, uh, you know, the lighting really hasn't come back the way I wanted it to. And I started to pack up all my things. And I said, all right, I'm going to go have some hot cocoa. And all of a sudden, the lighting came back to exactly the way it was. And I just went... <sighs> all right let's do it but you know what i'm so glad i did um because i actually hadn't filled in any of the branches at that point um that's why uh maybe about two minutes ago on the video you saw where i was putting in the uh lights on the light side of the building yeah that's why i hadn't done it at that point because the lights hadn't come back and then when they did i went all right i'm gonna do it i'm just gonna i'm gonna do it <laughs> Yeah. Now this is um, where I started to add. There's a, a little pathway there, and so that pathway is is what I was talking about. Sort of breaking up the uh, the the contrast of the the red and uh, the the red of that building with that green. Um, so what I was trying to do is that that path has this sort of like yellowish tone to it. Um, so when you look at it in person, it's just another directional line to head back towards that building. But the yellow on the green really isn't that um, much contrast. Um, and then also the shadows of that red building, um, where, like toward the right where near where it meets the ground, um, that's pretty dark against a red building, just because red is a, is a really dark color inherently. Um, so yeah, that was just a, a sort of a way to smooth out the, the contrast there. Yeah, and adding some of the greens into that building too, um, because there was quite a bit of moss and, and um, you know, off-colored sort of looking stuff there. So yeah, and this is the, the painting as it was. And I'm really happy with it, actually. Um, I felt like it did everything that I wanted it to. And I'm really glad that you joined me.